जर एकच मिनिट राहिला चौधरी सर आपण एक yes, yes. मी पीपीटी आता ऑन करतो आणि आपण स्टार्ट करूया चालेल मी मग मी एक मिनिट मला फक्त दोन मिनिटं द्या मी लगेच आता लाईन वर जातो येस आता लाईन वर जातो लगेच सर स्टार्ट करूया मी गो लाईव्ह करतो येस ओके स्टार्ट ओके गुड इव्हनिंग वन अँड ऑल आय संजय चौधरी कॉर्डिनेटर आनंद शिव गुरुकुल जिनियर कॉलेज टुडे इज द सेव्हन डे ऑफ वेबिनार अनलॉक टू लॉकडाऊन आय लाईक टू वेलकम टू ऑल इन वेल इन दि ऑफ ऑफ अवर कॉलेज सेक्रेटरी गुरुवर्य डॉक्टर प्रदीप धवस सर मॅनेजमेंट ऑफ एसीएस all dignitaries trustees principal of our college junior college dr seema hardikar madam and today resource person mrs apurva deshmukh from paris presenting the webinar on topic career in entertainment i am very much thankful to our principal madam has given the opportunity to introduce our press guest Apurva madam is an entertainment uh, entertainment professional with 11 years of experience across the genres of film television and corporate work she has been running a production house in mumbai and is currently based in paris completing her international mba at the prestigious is sca g schools of management she is also an avid travels across the seven countries and counting my request to apurva madam begin the sessions and over to you madam apurva madam hello good evening everyone thank you so much uh, first i would like to thank good dr harbikar for inviting me um, second to all the management and staff i absolutely think what you are doing is a very commendable thing for your students especially in these difficult times so before i begin i would just like to um, uh, hope that i would just like to see if everyone's doing okay because these are very uncertain and difficult times and uh, you know we have to power through and i hope that today's session is helpful to somebody you know it gives you some sort of an idea about how you could build your future um, especially now with hope um so if if it's okay um, i would like to share my screen uh, i have prepared a small presentation about um, about careers in entertainment yes ma'am uh okay uh, is my screen visible yes yes, yes. okay yes. um so uh, just a little bit about myself i am uh, i i am a film pro- professional as the uh, thank you for the gracious introduction i am a film professional i've been i i'm me mumbai chi mulgi hai raised completely in mumbai and i i have worked about 12 years now in entertainment i started my uh, career very early with no idea of what i want to do in life i just knew that i like some things and i wanted to make a difference to the world um i knew that i liked cinema from the beginning and i entered my first film set at 10 o'clock uh, when i was 10 years old and i was completely enamored by that life and decided to dedicate my life to creating some good content and making cinema worthwhile uh today i have uh, i have done some international cinema i have done some bollywood cinema but uh, a majority chunk of my career has been with reality tv 
in india i think um, shows like dance india dance and india's dancing superstar they are household names and i've worked uh, i've worked through the first dance india dance to the entire dance boom in india so if you have any questions about that i'm very happy to answer apart from that i i run my own production house in bombay um and my production house is um, focused primarily on corporate films and on on trying to make uh, uh, cs uh, csr awareness for corporates trying to make it like a uh, trying to make some difference because I, in the middle of my career i kind of realized that i wanted to make a difference to uh, to our environment to our children and i thought that uh, films is the only thing i knew so this this is just my way of kind of putting putting something in the world out there uh, apart from that i'm also a consultant i have worked as a casting consultant for many years uh, so if you if any of you are going to be the next sharukh khan or anwar <laughs> rai i would love to be introduced to you um, i have also done reasonable amount of fictional tv so that's also something that i could i could help you and answer some questions about i run a, a road safety organization called uh, safe india road foundation in bombay where we work primarily with uh, uh, with vulnerable children who of uh, who um, you know to teach them about pedestrian crossing because uh, of course it's it's a little bit of a problem in india and we're trying to do a bit to try to at least educate our children on safe road practices and how we can avoid accidents in general so this is about my work this is how what i do professionally i have won some awards um i'm very pleased to share that i've won some uh, won uh, an award at the uh, un global road safety film festival in geneva i have also won an award in morocco and um, uh, we've received good recognition for some of our charitable films that we made um so if you if you have any questions about uh, how the awards thing works you know i'm happy to answer those as well um some more about me this is the fun things about me i i am currently living in paris i'm completing my mba here uh, this is the first time i'm living abroad so um, of course I, i know that if somebody wants to make a career abroad especially in europe i did a lot of research so maybe i can answer some questions about that i love traveling i have been traveling uh, for for about uh, 10 years now i've covered about 18 countries as of now but i'm a backpacker and i like i like experiencing new cities new cultures and everything so um, i hope that by by next year i have some more i'm able to travel again and i have some more countries on my list uh i have uh, i when when i was younger i was really interested in drama i have uh, i have a certification from the national school of drama uh which is a very interesting uh, sort of an organization so um uh, that and uh, also i i speak hindi english marathi and but uh, my marathi is a very madhya pradesh marathi it's not bombay marathi because i spent my younger years in madhya pradesh but i am a maharashtrian and yete mala marathi uh okay so i would like to begin this by uh, by kind of opening your minds just a little bit to what what kind of careers could you have in entertainment um entertainment is a very broad topic and uh, i feel that there is a place for everyone in especially if you are based out of mumbai or thane or if you if you based out of this this is the heart of cinema this is where all great cinema has happened will happen in the future and i know how much we all love watching films we all love going for we all love our favorite actors we love stories and i feel that there is there is no such thing as an expert in cinema you know it's just it's just on what you like to do you like to pursue um so with that open mind let's begin uh, trying to explore some careers in india 
um, in entertainment i chose india specifically because a majority of my work has happened in india and in bombay uh, i have done some international work so i'm very happy to talk about that later if you would like or if you have any questions about that whatever to the limited knowledge that i have i am comfortable talking about it as well uh, okay so so the uh, so the journey of a film in india um, uh, in india how how what happens when when you enter a cinema hall what, what you actually see how does it begin where does the seed of that idea come from so let's start from there um we you have about say about six phases in cinema um phase 1 is development where where it's kind of the seed of your uh, your story just forms uh phase 2 is the pre production where you try to like you know you water it you nurture it a little bit you add the soil uh phase 3 is production which means that continuous watering adding manure trying to make it grow faster um phase 4 uh, is post production where you're constantly like seeing if there's something wrong with my plant and how can i make this better uh phase 5 would be distribution where you try to create more of the same plant uh you know you try to take the plant take a small uh, branch and then you know try to create more plants ab- uh, around it and uh, phase 6 is exhibition the exhibition is the final phase because exhibition is how you can sit in a cinema and actually watch a film happen so these are just broadly the six phases that um, that we see in cinema i will not be talking about development a lot because it is a very abstract subject it is something that uh, kind of just appears um, it, it it could be it the seed of a film can come from anywhere you know sometimes a director will have a great idea in mind and he will want to he will decide to pitch it to a writer that you know can you write me a script about this or sometimes writers have written great work they've just written a poem and and a poem has become a huge film or you know they've read a short story written by sharad chandra chatopadhyay in back in uh, back in 1923 and today we have a film like parinita so you know the seed can come from anywhere so i will not be talking about it because it's a very abstract process um but i will talk about from phase 2 onwards um sorry yeah um next we have the pre production pre production as i've written below it's a very simple uh, process a writer goes to a director director says okay i like this project i can make this um director goes to the producer says you know can you give me money to make this this is what i want producer goes to his evaluators and says that okay so this director has come to me with this project you think i can make a film you think it will sell the evaluators say okay yeah i think it will sell then the producer hires an executive producer executive producer is kind of like the um, you know the the guard of the film his his job is to ensure that while there is a lot of creativity the producers interests are also matched and not, not a lot of money is spent wasted um you know to get best quality in least price is the executive producer motto uh, so the executive producer makes a budget keeping in mind the director's requirements and the story's um, requirements what kind of locations do they want what kind of things do they want and and then once the budget is made together the director and the producer they hire the rest of the crew um in pre production what kind of jobs can you expect um if you are just starting your career i would recommend that you do not apply for jobs which are of director producer or financer unless you have a lot of money <laughs> but um but these jobs are highly uh, highly skilled uh, they require you to be highly skilled have a lot of experience um uh, have have failed have had success it it comes with it's a very experiential process so um so it's better to kind of learn for many years and then switch to a direction like this mm, 
as far as the non bold ones are concerned there's a story writer um there's a screenplay writer screenplay is basically um in in a story how do you see like how do you see it playing out a story i can write a story like a purva went to the office yesterday but a screenplay would be like oh apurva went to her office in paris uh, ladifons uh, the office was a very uh, very white office and there was there was this on the thing that's kind of what a screenplay is where you add more elements you set the scene a uh, storyboard is just a pictorial representation of what what your scene is going to look like um uh, then a uh, dialogue so a uh, storyboard artist needs to be an extremely artistic person so if anyone's into art this is a very good field to kind of you know uh, explore um then you could be a dialogue writer a di- dialogue writing comes with a little bit of skill and expertise but it's not it's known that there have been freshers who actually attempted this and done a great job at it um apart from that an executive producer is somebody who understands finance um who understands filming who has very, a very solid network of uh, a a very solid network of people around him or her and uh, they know how to get things done in very short period in and live in a very work in a very high pressure environment so an executive producer is also a job that ideally you could you would have to have a lot of experience maybe about 10 or 15 years to reach that stage um on the right i have mentioned some skills that you can have um for uh, for the jobs in pre production uh, you need to be creative of course your project needs to stand out um you need to be proactive um you need to have some writing knowledge um languages it, it's very important agar um, agar aap film hindi mein bana rahe hain to aapko hindi aana bahut zaruri hai hindi um, bahut shuddh hindi honi chahiye aapki um और अगर जर तुम्ही मराठीत बनवता है तो मराठीत तुम्हाला थोडं अजून त्याच्यात मराठी प्रॉपर यायला पाहिजे माझ्यासारखी नाही अँड देन अँड देन इमॅजिनेशन यू यू नीड टू बी व्हेरी इमॅजिनेटिव्ह दिस इज वेअर ऑल युअर क्रिएटिव्हिटी एनिथिंग यू कुड यू कुड you know you could make jab uh, uh, when steve spielberg had uh, thought of et like you know it's something that is so um, uh, so different from our world you you need to you need to be somebody like that you know you can't put yourself in a box um, as a writer or as a thinker always think really big because uh, because i honestly believe that in cinema anything is possible anything um you need some knowledge of films of course and this is important not only from like a creative perspective but also from a legal perspective uh, because uh, um as you know that uh, uh, plagiarism is a very common thing that happens and uh, you cannot uh, um you have to be very careful that you are not stealing somebody's ideas or even if you are taking inspired from somebody's ideas they are um, you have made it different enough to not look like an exact copy at the same time if you are if you are taking adapting a book you need to make sure that you have the requisite permissions and uh, people have agreed to uh, be uh, coming on your show um, uh, to 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 be sharing their stories through your medium and that's important networking i mean i cannot stress this enough um if i have a good story and i want to make a film on it it's only and only because of networking that film can actually happen because you really need to network you need to talk to a lot of people you need to know a lot of people you need to ask for favors you need to you know put your ego aside and just ask people for favors you know try to get feedbacks from uh, directors that you know that have done very good um, that are very big in their careers you know you try to take 
constructive feedback. You try to build your project up really nicely so that you can go, when you go to a producer, the producer sees value in your project and decides that, okay, you know, I will, I will participate in this. Apart from that, um, um, so this is pre-production. It's it's not a very hectic sort of an environment. You work from say between um, uh, between about nine to six every day. Um, if you're making a film, it's a very famous quote. Ki, um, uh, if you're in the film making business, um, it's a trade off with sleep. How much you sleep because you don't end up sleeping a lot. You have to work. Uh, some your hours are very long, and but the work is so satisfying that you know it, it's justified. Um, so in pre-production, it's not very heavy work. It's more of thinking. It's more of uh, it's more of brainstorming, referencing, um, trying to build a product that is very different from everything else. So that's pre-production. But what, however, is a little what however is very taxing is production this is where all the magic happens so in pre-production you have ideally if you if you've done good pre-production production is just kind of like you know it's just managerial work it's just that making a schedule and sticking through that schedule but of course things always go wrong and production is a very heavy exercise it's the most expensive exercise of any film uh, making uh, where you're spending money by the day sometimes even by the hour so uh, you cannot expect any delays everything because uh, the crew works on a shift so even if you go five minutes over the shift you have to pray the crew half day worth of extra work and it's very taxing on the budget so it's about 70 percent of the budget is this is your pre-production so it's it's i would say about 60 percent it's it's a very um, um so that, because it's so time bound it's a very high pressure environment and um, you on an average film set that i have worked on um there's about 400 to 500 crew members each have their specific task everybody has a role on a set um, it's a very streamlined process that if you are on a film set you have a specific job otherwise you know you are not going to be on that film set uh, here are some key departments that I have listed down uh, of course it keeps changing with what your uh, what your specific requirement is but uh, for a generic uh, shoot film. Uh, these are your specific departments. Um, there's a director, uh, as I already mentioned, you need a lot of experience. A uh, director is basically the captain of this production ship. He is the one who's going to make sure that, um, that, that the film is shot well, the actors have performed well, the costumes are good, the art is pretty. He is the he or she is the person who's completely responsible for that, and hence the director's word is the final word on any film set. Whether you are a producer, whether you are a financer, you have to um, uh, you have to listen to the director in this phase of filmmaking. Um, then there's the executive producer who is the final word on all budget and financial matters. Um, he has his uh, he has his own little team of finance people. One of them will be an accountant. One of them will be uh, one of them will be a production manager of his own. He um, he basically has to set a system in such a way that uh, that all all expenses, every single rupee spent in the film, is accounted for. Again, this is a very taxing job. Maybe about 15, 20 years from when you start your career is when you actually get there. Um, <clears throat> second is a DOP. DOP is a short form for uh, director of photography, or they are also called cinematographers. Um, these people are highly uh, skilled um, technical uh, uh, technical leads in their own fields. They they know how to operate a camera and um, uh, some of the most sophisticated equipment because a film camera is is very sophisticated. It requires a lot of um, 
you know, a lot of um, uh, highly specific technicalities. Uh, a DOP is kind of the king of that. He works very, he or she works very closely with the director to kind of ensure that they've got the same feel that they were looking for on that day, you know, in that scene. And uh, uh, he, uh, this person basically, he, the director, the DOP are just one team at all times on a film set. Um, and the DOP has his, his own assistance. He has a, he has a focus puller, uh, somebody who uh, manages focus. Uh, you know, focus is uh, basically makes the image sharper for, for him or her. And uh, he has his own assistants who uh, who plan his next uh, camera, who, who who decide what lenses, who take care of everything. And since camera is one of the most expensive equipments on any set, um, it comes with its own uh, crew of bodyguards and basically people who will allocate things to you at all times. Um, so DOP, to become a DOP, you kind of need to go to a film school. You need to go to understand technical um, technical knowledge about a camera. Uh, or you could even, you know, you could even do a crash course. It's a very uh, lucrative film, especially in these times because cameras have become uh, smaller and more sophisticated and um, pretty much point and shoot. Any of us could uh, actually perform a lot of work that DOPs used to do at one point. Uh, so DOP now has become a more of a creative job, um, you know, to think out of the box rather than uh, just a highly technical job. Um, then you have assistant directors. The director always has his own uh, crew of assistant directors. Uh, there will be their their roles are very uh, very carefully divided. He will have an associate director who will basically make sure that everything is happening on schedule. The associate director makes this, uh, the chief uh, assistant director makes a schedule for the production to follow, for the crews, uh, the rest of the crew to follow, and everything. And uh, this um, uh, this role is is a very um, it, it does not need you to be very very skilled, but it does need you to be a highly proactive person. It needs you to have a lot of command over people you need to be kind of like an authoritative figure who can who can make people do things for them um so in a way you do and i think that that's something that comes with a little bit of experience but it is a very good place to learn um this kind of a job and it can actually uh, lead to becoming a director um, very early in in your in your career um this is a very um, it's a very interesting, very dynamic field. You can pick your own uh, skills and you can stick to those skills or you could pick a director who you want to, uh, who you really want to work with. You know, you could just approach them and, you know, most of the times there's place for these uh, roles in any um, any filmmaking uh, organization. So, so this is not a very hard job to get into, to, to break into, but of course it's very hard to execute. Uh, then there's a costume department. There is also a costume director, like a costume assistant director, who takes care of uh, costumes in films is not just, you know, it's just it's not just about what looks pretty or, you know, what suits the theme. They also have to maintain this thing called continuity because uh, in film, one day could, one scene could, what you see for maybe five minutes, that scene has been shot over four to five days. So um, so in order to maintain that same continuity, like to look the same way, you know, to have your accessories, if bindi hili hui hai, to wo hili hui hi rehni for the rest of the thing. So these are very, like very minute details that the costume department also looks into. Um, apart from apart from keeping costumes ready, apart from having a costume for every character, apart from knowing which characters in which scene, so you know they are constantly running back and forth from the set to the van, set to the van, trying to just find hey, uska ye nahi mil ra, wo nahi mil ra. These people make the most noise in any film set. Then you have the lighting crew. Uh, the lighting crew is uh, completely dependent on the DOP. Um, the DOP will tell the, um, the lighting crew has 
a very important person in it, which is a gaffer. A gaffer works very closely with the DOP, and he uh, or she basically um, directs the rest of the lighting crew where to place the lights, what kind of cuts are they looking for. In cinema, lights make all the difference. If it's a very sad scene, you'll always see like the lighting is very low. If it's a celebration, there'll be like lights everywhere. When you're when you're showing your um, when your hero falls in love with your heroine, you know her face will be glowing like nothing. So these are things that uh, that lighting can actually change. So it is a very important. Uh, uh, thing, but it also requires technical knowledge, maybe a crash course or something. Uh, then you have the uh, cinematography department, um, which works with the DOP. Then you have the sound department. Uh, sound is a very complicated process. Um, I have I have known people who've not had uh, prior education before getting into this business because uh, I think it's more of like an experience learning thing. So you could assist a sound, um, a sound engineer for a bit and pick up that skill as well. Um, but uh, ideally people like, um, people like to hire people who have uh, done a course in sound engineering. Uh, then you have makeup and hair. Makeup and hair is a very, um, open uh, concept. There are some uh, five to six very big uh, uh, makeup artist providers in, in India. And if, if this is something you're interested in, um, it's, it's very good. You can, uh, you can get in touch with these people and intern with them. And they are usually very open to new talent. Um, so, you know, you could approach them on social media or something and just tell them that, you know, I want to assist you for the next film or something. And, you know, it, they will let you do that. They're usually very open. And then there's an art department. Art department basically creates your set and um, uh, it, like the most, uh, the most, um, the most under stress art department in the world is Sanjay Leela Bansali's set art designers because, because the sets are so large and they have a lot of details. And uh, for example, there are certain directors like Mr. Bansali who prefer, like you can see even when you watch his cinema that he is somebody who gets into very minute details of his set. Like you can see each carving on each pillow. So it, this is a, a very heavy department and you need to have um, technical knowledge to be here. But the good thing is the technical knowledge for all of this is uh, is can be done in a crash course and mostly by learning on the job. Um, then there's a line production department. This department works directly under the executive producer. Their job is to make sure that that there is their jobs are very fluid. It's to make sure that the absolute there is absolutely no delay in in the production at all. So there will be one person who will be taking care of transport to and fro of your actors, of your of your crew, of your cars. There'll be an F and B manager who will be taking care of the food that is provided to everybody. There'll be a location manager who's making sure that the permissions are are there for each location and people are um, people are you know uh, people are interested and they are uh, they are making sure that that uh, they are not getting thrown out of locations or whatever the director wants he makes sure that the location is there then you have a travel manager you have a um, you have a contract you have a legal manager you have a lot of uh, different managers that you could be uh, production department is actually the one that works most tirelessly because they need to not only take care of budget but also logistics, which is very uh, very big task. Imagine for a crew of five hundred people. Um, then you have an online edit. So while your uh, while your film is being shot, um, the footage becomes too much. Uh, for for you know for it to go in post or sometimes the director wants to see how something looks um, you know what if I do this ye kaisa so you have a you have a department that is with an editing setup on your set 
so they can sit together they can review the footage they can decide that okay i don't like this we, we need to reshoot this or maybe we could shoot it in this manner so they are constantly engaged with them these people also ensure that your um, that your footage is basically secure and it's protected and um, and it reaches the uh, the back end studio at in a very safe and proper manner because the footage is basically what all the efforts all the money has gone towards so it's it's like it's the most it's more important than like 10 kg of gold to uh to film producers everybody knows where the footage is at what stage is it and it's it's they they have multiple copies of the footage so that you know if one copy goes bad you have other copies to sustain uh, which is a very good thing that has happened in modern times because uh, when i started my career um there was one day that you know we lost a lot of footage shot on that day and there was no way to recover it because that at that time technology was not you know that cheap or that uh, fast at that time so now this is a great thing that you know we can do apart from that uh, there is a prop and setting department uh, prop and setting basically uh, prop department is properties uh, so any properties like um if if the heroine is throwing a glass of water in somebody's face so that glass of water is the prop so there is a lot of elements like that sometimes your prop could be an elephant sometimes your prop could be a car sometimes it could be a hockey stick it could be anything and the prop department kind of has to make sure that each and every element of it is there on your set when it's required Uh, then we have the cast of course cast is very important cast includes all your actors everybody basically who's been cast for the film you uh, the cast is also divided into primary secondary and tertiary your primary cast is recurring characters people who are important whose story it is uh, your secondary is the recurring char- characters so for example hero heroine agar main characters hai to you know secondary characters will be hero ka chacha hero ka heroine ke mama and people like that and your tertiary cast will be neighbors or a uh, crowd jo hota hai uh, you know a lot of films we see that the, the crowd gathers when a fight happens so this crowd is completely controlled and it's because otherwise you won't be able to shoot so this crowd is essentially like uh, from uh, people who have been hired to stand there so that you know they can basically do what you ask them to uh, do etc um so these are the roughly the key jobs that uh, key departments and jobs where you could explore a career um i wouldn't say that a lot of them pay very well at this point it really depends on how well your negotiation is how good you are at your work and uh, more importantly how badly do they need you uh, but initially in these departments i i can assure you that you should not get into it with the spirit of uh, wanting to earn a lot of money because the returns come but they come very late uh, sometimes but uh, the satisfaction of being part of something that is bigger than um that the whole country can walk into a cinema and watch it's it's really unparalleled um skills so specific skills i have listed some skills out there i'm very happy to share this knowledge with dr hardika later um maybe she could share with you as well um there are certain kinds of skills that you need i have uh, noted them down i think like you know uh, as far as i've explained the roles it's uh, kind of understandable what kind of skills there are so i will move on mm. then you get into the post production now you've shot your movie all those footage copies that you made you sent them somewhere right so where did you send them you sent them to a studio uh, which is well equipped with the uh, uh with uh, you know with uh, uh, an editing setup uh, a, a sound mixer uh, you know you have a team that takes care of color correction that does graphics you need to add some sort of 
um, jazz. So uh, to be very honest, most of your content in the film is made on in pre-production, but actually your film is completely made on post-production. You, it doesn't. If your post-production is bad, it doesn't matter how well you shot or whether you shot in the palace of, uh, if you shot in the Taj Mahal. Because if your post-production team cannot justify that you shot the Taj Mahal in their post, because the Taj Mahal, if you just shoot it, it looks like a normal building from anywhere. But the post-production is where you actually put the put the masala actually in it, you know. So you can do the color correct color corrections. You can change some lightings. You can. Um, you can give it a tone. You can uh, you can add some music. You can add background music, um, which background music basically tells the viewer how they are supposed to feel about a scene. So if you hear like ten and 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 something like that, you know how you are supposed to feel about a particular topic. Then you also. At this stage, another thing that happens, apart from the very obvious, is a dubbing. So uh, a lot of times you shoot in places where, um, where you know the um, uh, where the audio quality is not great. So everybody, the entire cast, usually comes back to dub their voice again and imitate the their acting. So this is also an actor's job. So uh, I think that an actor's job is the most difficult ever. So um, this is also part of an actor's job, and it's quite taxing. Then you have a voiceover. This is a very interesting career to explore because if you have a good voice, um, and if you can, if you can, I know a lot of young people today. They can, they can do very good mimicry. You know, they can, they can do beatboxing. They can do a lot of vocal arts. If that's something that you're really interested in, you should really try to explore a voiceover, a, vo a career in voiceover. It's very simple, just uh, through a Google search, you can find out how to train uh, yourself. You train yourself and then you, know, you go on any of these uh, freelancer websites and you can showcase your work and if people like your work, they will definitely hire you. And that's that's a very um, it's a very up and coming field, especially with the rise of social media. So um, this is something that is completely worth exploring. Um, another skill, I think this is this just goes for filmmaking in general. You need to have a lot of organization skills because you are going to be juggling twenty things in a day. If you're not organized in terms of how you think or how you keep your important documents and just basic things, it's going to be very hard for you to keep up and to be disciplined. If you're somebody who cannot wake up in the morning in in a film set, if you if call time is like the word of God. So if you're not available on set on the call time, it's literally the... It's literally the most disrespectful thing you can do for your entire crew. So discipline is also very, very important uh, in a film set. So I guess, uh, you know, in school, when I had to wake up at six o'clock or even in college, when I had seven o'clock lectures, I used to get really frustrated sometimes because I'm not a morning person, but uh, it trained me for my career in cinema later. Otherwise, I would have never made it to a film set. So in a way, it's good that you have to wake up early now. Um, and networking. Networking is another very important thing you need to be. Some of us are very introvert and, you know, we're not very social. But uh, I guess when it comes to work, we have to try a lot, try to build our skills in such a way that we can interact with people and we can talk to people. There's a lot of vid YouTube videos on self-improvement that you can see. And uh, networking is actually important to get any kind of job anywhere. So you you need to kind of pick up your skills. And I've seen a lot of YouTube videos which give you a very good idea of how to be a better communicator. Uh, okay, moving on to distribution. Um, your film has been made. The, uh, the film looks like a masterpiece now. Um, but nobody's seen it yet, except for the handful of people that 
uh, that made this film nobody actually who's nobody has yet paid you money to see a film so what do you do about that you try you distribute the film so distribution is a very um it's a very um it's a very networking media is this is where the the game becomes completely public this is where you know your you your crew completely changes it completely changes from your pre production production post production to now the crew is completely different because in distribution what happens is uh, you have a uh, you you uh, your film goes to a distributor who says her okay you know i will do the uh, pna which is publicity and advertising and i will distribute it in cinemas so th- there is a proper discussion on which cinemas it will go to it's a, it's a money game where they discuss that okay um, you know you pay me so much and let this theater buy the rights for my film so like that your film gets distributed across the panel and uh, uh, wherever you think that the uh, the film will ma- have a better reaction from people that uh, that exercise takes place but while it's getting distributed you need to still tell people that okay go to pvr our film is there so how do you do that to 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 communicate this message you use pr you use marketing um, techniques marketing has completely changed over the past 5 years in india it is a very 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 lucrative market to get into right now especially because um, um, because it went from from having a set standard of marketing that okay we you know having a set list a set agenda it's become much more abstract now because uh, i have uh, recently seen films being marketed on uh, on uh, tiktok so <laughs> things like that really happen you know the world has completely changed it's becoming much smaller so if you are a, a content creator or if you want to be a content creator or uh, this is something that you could also you know this is something you should be keeping an eye on because uh, how are films being marketed these days and you should you should kind of try to project and um, track that particular segment um, in terms of creating your content because at the end of the day all the money is in marketing these days so uh, it's a very good uh and most uh, most marketing uh, people that i have met are either are either in business or have either done an mba or a business course of some sort and those who have not done an mba or a business course they have been in the business for very long um so they are very aware of the market trends and how to project where which market is good right now um, but marketing i think i am not the best person to uh, guide about marketing but i i can assure you that a lot of tvcs um uh, if what i am related to in my field a lot of tvcs or uh, uh, television commercials can give you an idea of how to sell a product to a customer who maybe does not need it but you know you need to make them feel that they need it so it's it's a very interesting field and if you are interested in it it's it's an absolutely good market to get into right now then in terms of media partners uh, media partners will be your uh, radio mirchi radio city uh, times of india uh, your print partners your electronic partners your tv partners uh, tata sky uh, you know these these partners are extremely important they have a very set uh, um, budget for how much they charge to be associated with you or they have a very good um, uh, streamlined system of barter which um, uh, which is very efficient in today's times so these media partners could totally um, um, you know this is also something you could get into you could if you want to get into in this media partnership uh, you would have to join a big organization because this is a very big game so um, maybe you could join like a radio mirchi you could join the the media media department or you could join the uh, pr department of some other company like you will have to seek bigger companies to get into these 
to any of these actually in any of these fields uh, in distribution i mentioned certification this is a very important step um, because in as i think as we all know that we have a uh, we have a certification central board of certification in india um, it's called the cbfc and um, basically if they do not certify your uh, film as clear your film cannot ever be shown to any audience in india it cannot go to distribution so <clears throat> basically an executive producer's job generally is to see the film till certification and this is where he hands over the film to distribution and he leaves but the certification is very difficult to obtain because they keep a very close a uh, close watch on what kind of practices have you followed have you paid your um, your uh, daily wage properly have they been paid so it's a very good system it's very efficient it's it works in favor of everyone um, have you abused any animals in this film you know have you have do you have nudity do you have you know things that 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 could aggravate the audience and this cbfc gives you a certificate so the certificate as we all know like what certificates are they are a a certificate which means it's for adults only or you have a 16 plus you know which can only be seen by a certain mature audience so they they give you this certificate and if they don't give you this certificate you cannot uh, showcase your film anywhere so this is a very important and a very good legal procedure to uh, to ensure that the kind of media that we create in india the kind of content we create in india is i i mean i wouldn't say it's completely foolproof but uh, but it's it's a good uh, it's a good vehicle to to keep control over everything <clears throat> okay so distribution so now you've distributed the film and the film has gone to theaters and people have started paying money and trying to watch the film so what happens now that that process is called exhibition um exhibition i will not talk about the theater part of exhibition because uh, that is something that you know that is something very uh, simple and that can be seen very clearly but as you can see here i have written this thing called rise of ott platforms what are ott platforms uh, ott platforms is a new kind of uh, net uh, content sharing platforms which is basically i'm sure you're familiar with, all, with the, all of them they are netflix there are amazon prime you know there's uh, there's uh, sony live there's uh, um there's alt balaji there's a lot of such platforms so the, these platforms are called ott platforms as you can see this is a, a data that i've taken from a deloitte study of 2019 um as you can see that uh, the people the usage of tablet in 2014 um uh, the usage of smartphones was really small and in 2019 it has grown exponentially this means that people are choosing to go lesser to cinemas and more view their um, content their films on their phone or on their on their tablet or on their laptop or something people uh, which is which is a huge thing for cinema in india because for a long time cinema has been made with the idea that that it should be bade parde pe kaisa lagega but now that you move to the chhota parda you have to change your entire selling technique you have to change your storytelling you have to change your or because your audience is changing completely your audience is becoming younger your audience is becoming smarter so uh, so in order to do that we can see like uh, companies like netflix and and uh, amazon prime they are investing very heavily especially in india right now to kind of uh, uh, produce breakthrough content which uh, which which is completely different from anything we've seen because um, i remember when i was growing up in the uh, in the early 2000s it was um, the the idea was ki are wo picture itni achhi nahi hai usme happy ending nahi hai 
but now if you actually see picture films they they forget happy ending they have the most bizarre concepts and everybody enjoys it like my father who's who's 65 right now even he really enjoys um, the content that's coming out today so it's become more and more important to kind of uh, to kind of assure that you know first of all it's very important to understand your audience right now we have a very young audience and the primary reason for that is because young people spend money on netflix and they spend they would spend money on netflix more than more than older people would because older people are still getting used to technology they're still trying to understand how technology works so if you just look around you your uh, parents or your you know your children you will generally see that for for example in my home i buy the netflix account and then i have extra accounts for my parents so you know the parents don't actually do the buying it's the children that are doing the buying which is a huge huge shift in uh, in spending pattern in india so it's very important for us to keep this in perspective especially for people who want to begin a career in cinema or in in entertainment in general it's very important to keep this idea in mind that the future is getting smaller and it's going completely portable it's going on your mobile so uh, so keep that in mind and if if that is something that you want to do then you should try to look for internships at netflix you should start try to look for production houses that work with netflix that have created content for netflix i i in the credits you can always see who has created what and you can approach them with your cvs and you know you can you can try to network and get into that market from there but this is a very important shift in trend in india because uh, recently i read an article that uh, that the uh, theater uh, the cinema theaters association has become pretty um, agitated at the fact that uh, due to this unfortunate covid-19 situation a lot of films are releasing for the first time on ott platforms which is uh, which is a really which really makes you wonder if you know cinema will will kind of um, cinema will at, like you know your cinema theaters traditional if they will still be there 10 years from now we don't know but it's a it's a question to ask and it's a thing to wonder so maybe this whole process could completely change in the future um another uh, on the right hand side this is also what mentioning that uh, you can see that in terms of uh, in terms of market share actually um uh, how much time people spend on these things you can see that very uh, steadily uh in the rest of the world the um the digital uh, the digital uh, attendance is completely taking over even tv so even tv as we know it uh, may become a much smaller medium and completely be taken over by digital so um so this is another thing and it's it's a huge uh, deal for me because because i spent a lot of years making television programs so for me to think that something like tv is not the most um, go to medium anymore is kind of shocking because uh, because digital um, uh, digital is such a diverse medium tv i mean pura uh, pura desh dekhega 9 baje um dance india dance to pura desh dance india dance hi dekh payega they can't see anything else but in digital you can you know your father could be watching a film in the corner i could be watching dance india dance in some other corner so it, it's it's become a very uh, diverse and niche sort of a situation so that's another thing to really consider um also in terms of exhibition i have uh, taken the same from the same deloitte study um what kind of what, what is the new network and as you can see that it's not linear anymore it's like a honeycomb now so ye, ye uh, this is he uh, could interesting i because um, um because it actually tells you that that the whole concept of house 
how uh, films are sold or how they are bought or how they are marketing as as the base is completely changing with changing times um i'm happy to share this as well um in the i could share the deloitte study um you know if somebody is more interested in things like this uh, i'm very happy to share about it um okay now uh, this is just a sort of a idea about what what is what we're expecting it what are the big um big markets right now so there is um, uh, they they conducted a content market survey but this was before the launch of disney plus and before disney blog bought hotstar um and you can actually see that there is a large population that spends between um that spends between 9 to 20 9 to you know 9 to like 21 hours like you know the prime time has completely moved to ott uh, which is a very big deal for tv and for cinema in general because that means that people have stopped watching tv at prime time so tv the the concept of prime time came from tv so um so now we don't have a prime time anymore which is very interesting <clears throat> okay uh sorry these are some names uh disney plus is set to completely change uh, uh video viewing in india and i would uh, highly recommend that if you can manage to get into the disney plus uh company or anything if you have an offer just go for it because there's nothing like it right now <clears throat> okay so here i'm just trying to understand what is the expected growth of ott in india um in india we are expecting ott to grow in 2022 we expect that it will reach a uh, 48 billion uh but what's interesting is that in 2024 we are expecting that it will become an industry of 74 billion ina which is almost at par with tv and films combined right now so uh, that's a huge huge step so that is definitely a career that you could totally look into okay this concludes my slides i don't want to bore you with a lot of information or overload you but just to give you an overview of what the film market is like in india uh but of course i'm very happy to answer any questions that you may have however abstract they are i can talk about travel i can talk about films tv anything yes uh, thank yes ma'am thank you very much madam for explaining about your in the good manners i am requesting to all the teachers and students if you have want to ask any questions please raise your hand uh the yes, sir is asking uh gautam sir please uh, unmute to dhage sir i'm sorry yes dhage uh, yes. sir good evening miss yes good evening miss uh is it costume department is related to four related to fashion designer as you told costume bhi hai it is related to a fashion designer uh, profile um okay that's an interesting question uh you um not really because uh, fashion design is to stay in touch with the current trends but costume is more about what suits your film and what you can uh, uh costume could also be like an outfit from 1954 so you know it's it's not something that's trending so it's it's a little different but it really the technical knowledge is the same it really helps if you have the technical knowledge thank you one more question uh, as you told all these uh, contents is it uh, same to the for web series also or sh short screen also small sorry small screen also um it's, uh, it's almost similar only the uh, the scale i think is a lot different because the budgets are smaller so yeah i tried to give you an overview of what the whole process is but yes definitely the scale varies quite a bit Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone? Please you are. Ah, uh, Garima, ma'am, is in here. Please uh, unmute to Garima, ma'am. Yes. Hello. 
हेलो मैम हेलो ओके ओके आई वांट टू वन क्वेश्चन आस्क यू आफ्टर पासिंग टेंथ इज इट कंपलसरी टू टेक आर्ट स्ट्रीम टू एंटर दिस जॉब नो बिकॉज आई टूक साइंस एज वेल साइंस एंड आई रियलाइज दैट आई रियली वॉन्टेड टू डू सिनेमा सो आई जस्ट गॉट इन टू एन इंटर्नशिप आफ्टर माई ट्वेल्थ बोर्ड ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम प्रश्न मत प्रश्न को विचार नहीं अपन आई रिक्वेस्ट टू अवर प्रिंसिपल मैम to say some few words okay good evening all thank you apurva for a wonderful session uh, our secretary honorable dhawal sir is here and definitely he will be guiding us and uh, he is uh, from very creative field many uh, plays he has produced so apurva uh, there will be you know many questions from his side will be coming uh, and for me it is wonderful listening to you uh, i have heard about you know that film is a quite volatile film it is an extremely creative film but uh, the technicality is that how you know post production is being done pre production and everything how you know distributions then everything we were very unclear and most of our students must have learned a lot uh, whatever uh, you have uh, presented uh my question is to you that uh, how cinema will change after this covid 19 because now we are seeing that most of the people uh, they are you know uh, watching films on netflix or youtube also there are many films are available online nowadays because uh, shootings of uh, their favorite serials have been stopped so they are more you know watching films nowadays this is the first question and the second question is that uh, the film is certainly a very creative field and uh, there are films which are you know very high budget films there are very low budget films also there uh, this uh, savariya and sanjay leela bansali as uh, you had mentioned and uh, jodha akbar they were very very big budget films but there were you know there were people even they had not liked jodha akbar but film like serat it was very low budget film but you know that uh, it is everybody knows even our generation also had liked that film especially the end of that uh, movie the climax of that movie everybody had like we had not imagined so what do you think that what uh, what is that factor which affect the film i mean is it budget or is it a story so what what uh, no factor That's a very interesting question, and uh, that's a very good observation as well. Um, I think that um, I think that every uh, film uh, is like a uh, is like making a kitchen. You know, it needs to have a little bit of everything, and if it's a, if you put less salt, then nobody's going to like it. But uh, but that being said, in terms of high budget and low budget films, I i feel that um, uh, something like a serat the story itself was so powerful the music was mind blowing so they uh, i i read what they worked very hard on and in an interview they said that you know we worked very hard on the music because we felt that the music will tell our story better so it, it's it's actually on what usp you have as a crew and just to kind of maximize that usp because i have seen some directors i did i will not name names but i did one very big budget film which you know which kind of really nobody has even heard about it and then i did a small budget film which a lot of people have come and asked me about 
and the difference that i saw in these two films was just the amount of passion nothing nothing replaces passion if you are not passionate about every frame every word every line every character so you you don't really you know you don't really create something that great so maybe it's passion i don't know i'm still looking for answers myself but uh, but and your second question about uh, uh, films after covid uh, this is also very um, very big question because um, because i think that people have discovered that uh, they don't have the patience anymore to wait for the next episode which will come tomorrow they want everything available and to see it at their convenience so i think this this will define a very big shift to uh, from traditional fiction and non fiction television to ott platforms i yeah that's something that we can definitely expect thank you thank you thank you uh, there are many people who joined here uh, well senior college principal harshal alikit madam three primary section principal vedik kolankar madam if they have question they will certainly get back to you but for me it was a really wonderful session it was a treat because something was a very different subject and i thought that it must have appealed our you know young students and you are being uh, young i have seen you doing dance their dance then uh, your emotional attachment at time i used to feel how she is running after these people but that was you know fun really fun and it is uh, really wonderful watching you you know uh, grow in this field It's really nice. Uh, I would request Davar sir, uh, Gautam, please unmute him. I would like to listen to him if he has question for this young girl. Yes, sir. Gautam sir. कभी बड़ा मधे एक बार छान महिती से ली दिली लगी. अरे मेरी के I'm also the writer and the producer of drama, especially. life of vivekananda and the life of shivaji maharaj and the life of mahatma gandhi these are the idol of our nation especially in india the question which i want to ask you principal madam seema madam already asked what is the, the position after the, this uh, corona madhyam prachand parwa sir amcha law college cha meeting la sayaji sindhya ala hota said that karan to maximum marathi manna amak to south film kade khup popular zala and what he said that it's a very difficult to say today what is a uh, manje kay aplak sagla asu shakto after manje uh, entertainment is the last uh, priority is uh, human uh, life hi sagya shevatchi priority is ahe but as a, uh, a writer ड्रामा एस्टैब्लिश प्रभाकर पंशीकर कथा तुम्हारा संगा सगना कला ना गोष जी है ना ती अलीक कला पैसा समीकरण खरे कलावंत महाराष्ट्र स्पेशली इन महाराष्ट्र बंगाल स्वतंत्र काल प्रभाकर पंसीकर मराठी रंगभूमि होती मैं ओनली द आर्टिस्ट ज्या कमीत कमी पंद्रह वीस हजार किलोमीटर ऐसी प्रवास मराठी रंगभूमि होती शेवटी शेवटी या माणसाला वृद्धाश्रमात जाऊन राहावं लागेल कलेचं कॉम्प्रोमाइज नाही करायचं मराठी माणसांवरती किंवा महाराष्ट्रावरती प्रभाकर पंसीकरांनी अधिराज्य गाजवले की काय हे अनेक नाटक आपल्या पूर्वी नवे आचार्यात भेटली सगळी नाटकं वर सगळ्यांना माहिती पण या कलेच्या प्लॅटफॉर्म कडे आपण सगळेजण मग तो ड्रामा असेल किंवा वॉट इज अ फिल्म असेल या ड्रामा कडे मला असं वाटतं कोविड नंतर पुन्हा एकदा आपल्या सगळ्यांची बघण्याची दृष्टिकोनच बदलेल आजही आम्ही घरामध्ये नेटफ्लिक्स बघतो 
मला हवा तो चित्रपट म्हणजे एक काळ असा होता ज्यावेळी शोले नावाचा चित्रपट आला होता ते शोले चित्रपट बघायला महाराष्ट्रात नव्हे तर देशामधन मिनर्वा थिएटरला लोक येत होते वॉट इज अ रिझन द रिझन इज दॅट तो कॉईन जो उडवायचा अमिताभ बच्चन कॉईन आपल्या बाजूला पडल्याचा एक वेगळ्या विशिष्ट असा साऊंड इफेक्ट व्हायचा तो ऐकण्यासाठी म्हणून मिनर्वाची महिना महिना दोन दोन महिने बुकिंग होत असायची खरं म्हणजे तो तो सगळा चेंजिंग नंतर जो झाला इंडस्ट्रीमध्ये प्रभाकर पंचेकरांच्या आयुष्यात ती घडलेली घटना सगळ्या मित्रवर यांना सांगायला सांगेल अपूर्व मॅडम म्हणजे अतिशय शास्त्रशुद्ध पद्धतीने वॉट इज द अपॉर्च्युनिटी आपल्या समोर ठेवलेल्या आहेत त्या सगळ्या ठेवत असताना प्रत्येकाने आपली स्ट्रेंथ जपणं फार गरजेचं आहे म्हणजे उत्तम अभिनय असेल प्रत्येकाला अभिनय प्रत्येकाला असं वाटतं की आपण वी मस्ट बी इन द फ्रंट ऑफ द ऑडियन्स तसं नसतं ना सगळं मी इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ टीम वर्क म्हणजे या हिंदी चित्रपटामधला एक मोठा माणूस आहे ज्याचं नाव तुम्ही कदाचित ऐकलं असेल मला माहित नाही पण माझी तुमचा इंडस्ट्रीमध्ये कोणतीही माणसं घ्या अलीकडची कोणती नावं जर प्रॉमिनेंट जी तुम्हाला माहिती आहे तुम्हाला बघून घेईन ही सगळी माणसं त्या माणसाला वापरून नमस्कार त्याला गुरु म्हटलं जातं इंडस्ट्रीमधला गुरु म्हटलं जातं त्याचं नाव आहे विकास देसाई आणि पुण्याच्या जी जिथे प्रशिक्षण दिलं जातं म्हणजे अगदी हिंदी चित्रपटामधले सगळे टॉप मोस्ट त्यांचे त्यांचे विद्यार्थी होते त्या विकास देसाईंचं अतिशय चांगलं वाक्य आहे ज्याने जे व्ही शांतरामचे जावे मुंबईच्या दादरचा स्टुडिओ जो स्टुडिओ सांभाळायचे ते व्ही शांताराम अतिशय जवळचे मित्र आहेत त्याने सांगितले की प्रदीप कलेची किंवा इंडस्ट्री मधली कन्सेप्टच बदलत गेलेली आहे जिथे आमची घुसमट होते सगळी कारण ऑल दे आर जुने सगळे कलावंत आहेत मग ते निर्माते होते त्याचे स्वतः उत्तम रायटर होते गेहराई नावाचा खूप गाजलेला चित्रपट तुम्हाला सगळ्यांना माहिती असेल कप्पा त्यांच्या मधन झाल्या तर ही इंडस्ट्री पुन्हा वेगळ्या दिशेने जाईल असं मला प्रामुख्याने वाटतं आणि मला त्या प्रभाकर पंचेकर यांची गोष्ट आठवते की प्रभाकर पंचेकर लहान होते खूप आणि त्यांना त्या काळामध्ये चित्रपटात काम करणं किंवा नाटकामध्ये काम करणं म्हणजे भिकारी लक्ष समजलं जात म्हणजे स्त्रियांच्या भूमिका तर हो येतच नव्हत्या सगळे पुरुषच स्त्रियांच्या सगळ्या भूमिका साकारायच्या म्हणजे स्त्रियांना तर शक्यच नाही चित्रपटाच्या आजूबाजूला जाता येत नव्हतं आम्हाला आमचं लहानपण आठवतो की सिनेमाला जायचं म्हटलं सिनेमा बघायचा म्हटला किंवा चित्रपट बघायचा म्हटलं की आई वडील परवानगी देत नसायची त्या लहानपणी बघत असतो आता तर काय सगळं समोरासमोर बघितलं जात आहे एक संस्कार आहे म्हणजे भारतीय कलेबद्दलची फार वेगळी आस्था आहे पूर्वीच्या काळामध्ये कलावंतांना राजदरबारामध्ये देखील एक वेगळा सन्मान आणि मान दिला जात होता त्याला राजश्रय होता पण अलीकडची सगळी कन्सेप्ट बदलत गेली प्रभाकर पंसीकरांनी एकदा लहान असताना शाळेमध्ये असताना वडिलांना विचारलं की बाबा मला नाटकामध्ये काम करायचे खाड कंद्याने कानफलात मानले असले दलबद्री धंदे माझ्या समोर काय करायचे नाही करायचं काय प्रश्न पडला तर हा मूळचा जन्मजात कलावंत रंगभूमी होती जायची फार इच्छा होती शाळेचं गॅदरिंग चालू होत आणि योगा या गाडी याचे वडील गावामध्ये फार प्रसिद्ध होते सरपंच त्या गावामधले होते आणि प्रमुख पाहुणे म्हणून गॅदरिंगला त्यांना बोलवलं आणि गॅदरिंग सुरू झालं आणि गॅदरिंग झाल्यानंतर संध्याकाळी घरी गेले रात्री उशिरा उशिरा तीन तीन चार चार वाजेपर्यंत त्या काळात शाळा कॉलेज अशी गॅदरिंग झाल्याची गावागावामध्ये घरी गेले प्रभाकरजी पण घरी गेले आणि मग त्यांनी बोलून घेतलं प्रभाकर इकडी ये असं आज मी तुझ्या कार्यक्रमाला आलो होतो प्रमुख पाहुणे होतो त्या कार्यक्रमामध्ये एक सुंदर परफॉर्मन्स एका बाईने केला तुला आवडला का तो हो बाबा मला आवडला असा जर तू परफॉर्मन्स करणार असेल तर एक बाप म्हणून तुला उद्या रंगभूमी होती जाण्याची संधी दिली तो घाबरत घाबरत पंसीकर जवळ गेले आणि बाबांना नमस्कार केला आणि मला की बाबा माफी मागतो पण त्या स्त्री पात्र जे होत जे फिमेल ऍक्ट ऍक्ट जो केला होता तो मी केला होता अशी अशी परंपरा मराठी नाट्य नाट्य क्षेत्राला आहे किंवा चित्रपटाला आहे अलीकडे 
अनेक चित्रपट आमच्यासारख्या मंडळीला बघावं देखील वाटत नाही माझ्या घरात देखील माझी मुलगी आमच्या दोघांमध्ये खूप वाद होतात मी म्हणतो चित्रपट लावायचा असेल तर जुना लाव किंवा एखादा घोडा असेल एंटरटेनमेंट म्हणून आम्ही त्याकडे बघतो प्रबोधन तर आता गेलंच नाही तो पण या कोविडच्या काळामध्ये मी काही नवीन नवीन चित्रपट बघतो आहे माझं मत सगळं बदलून गेलेलं आहे त्यामुळे की नव्या नव्या चित्रपटामध्ये देखील चांगल्या कमीत कमी खर्चामध्ये उत्तम चित्रपट येऊ शकतात त्यासाठी एक चांगल्या टीमची गरज आहे आणि तुम्ही आजच्या या संपूर्ण आपल्या अगदी सुरुवातीपासून ऐकत होतो पण सुंदर तुम्ही हा विषय मांडत होता मी रिअली प्राऊड की मराठी माणूस काहीतरी एक वेगळ्या अर्थाने करायचा प्रयत्न करतो आहे आणि तसा विचार जर आला मला असं वाटतं हा कोरोना झाल्यानंतर आणखी दोन तीन वर्षानंतर वेगळी इंडस्ट्री आपल्याला बघायला मिळेल काल मुंबई विद्यापीठाचे पुलगुरु आमच्याकडे आले होते त्यांनी जसं सांगितलं की आता चौथ्या इंड युनिव्हर्सिटीची गरज आहे पहिली युनिव्हर्सिटी गेली दुसरी गेली तिसरी गेली आता चौथ्या युनिव्हर्सिटीची गरज लागणार आहे त्या पद्धतीचा जर आपण विचार करू शकलो तर मला असं वाटतं की मनोरंजन किंवा एंटरटेनमेंट या माध्यमाच्या देखील नव्या नव्या आयडिया तुमच्यासारख्या वेगळ्या विचारवंतांमुळे या आपल्या इंडस्ट्रीमध्ये येऊ शकतील फार परवा अलका कुबल देखील हाच माझ्याशी या विषयावरती बोलत होती मराठीमध्ये खूप गाजलेली अभिनेत्री आपल्याला माहिती असेल अलका कुबल की जी माहेरचे साडू साडी ह्या चित्रपटामुळे प्रत्येकाच्या घराघरामध्ये पोचलेली म्हणजे गेलेली आहे तर अशी अशी कला आहे आता काय झालंय की अनेक गाणी आहेत अनेक चित्रपट आम्ही लगेच विसरून जातो तातल्या तात पण ती जुनी गाणी किंवा जुने चित्रपट आजही आमच्या पिढीला एक वेगळ्या अर्थाने दिशा देते किंबहुना एक प्रबोधनाचं देखील माध्यम त्यामधनं होत होतं फ्रस्ट्रेशन जसं आता आहे तसं त्या काळात देखील फ्रस्ट्रेशन होत आता तर घरोघरी प्रत्येकाने पैसा थोड्याफार प्रमाणात आहे तरी पूर्वीचा काळ असा होता पैसा देखील माणसांकडे नव्हता तरी मनोरंजनाची वेगळ्या अर्थाने व्याख्या या महाराष्ट्राने किंवा देशाने अनुभवलेली आहे आपण आला त्याबद्दल अतिशय सुंदर मार्गदर्शन तुम्ही केलं मी संस्थेच्या वतीने आपलं मनापासून आभार व्यक्त करतो धन्यवाद मॅडम हे अपूर्वाचे वडील पण मॉरिशस जॉईन झाले आहे आशुतोष देशमुख गौतम प्लीज अनम्यू फिल्म आशुतोषजी नमस्कार 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 मी तुमचं ऐकत होतो आणि तुमच्या विचारांशी एकदम सहमत आहे की जे मनोरंजनची डेफिनेशन आहे हळूहळू बदलत चालली आहे आणि हे जी नवी पिढी जे विचार करतीये आणि जे काम करतीये थोडं वेगळं आहे मी मॉरिशस मध्ये ऍक्च्युली आहे इथे मॉरिशस युनिव्हर्सिटी मध्ये मी फिल्म प्रोडक्शन शिकवतोय सध्या त्यामुळे इथे म्हणजे जगामध्ये काय चाललंय आणि आपल्याकडे काय चाललंय याच्यामध्ये खूप जास्त फरक नाही अंतर नाही त्यामुळे मला असं वाटतं की एक जी जसं जसं ते म्हणले जसे कुलगुरूंनी सांगितलं की एक चौथी जे एक इंडस्ट्री सारखं जे सगळं पूर्ण बदलत आहे जग त्या बदलत्या जगामध्ये एंटरटेनमेंट पण नक्कीच थोडं बदलणार आणि ते बदलतं एंटरटेनमेंट आता ते ओटीटी प्लॅटफॉर्म की जे अपूर्व बोलत होती ते नक्कीच ते आहे की म्हणजे त्यांनी जसं ते व्हॅक्युम भरून काढला पूर्ण व्हॅक्युम त्यांनी टेलिव्हिजनचा भरून काढला त्याच्यानी नक्कीच हे एक क्लिअरिटी आली आहे की आता एंटरटेनमेंट एका नव्या दिशेने चाललं आहे पण सगळ्यात महत्वाची गोष्ट जी एम्प्लॉयमेंटची जी गोष्टी करतीये ते आता आपण मराठी लोकांनी पण विचार केला पाहिजे कारण आता याला याच्यामध्ये आता पैसा पण आहे नाव पण आहे आणि नोकऱ्या पण खूप आहे तर जर थोडस आम्ही आपल्या चाकोऱ्यातनं बाहेर आलो की आम्हाला नुसतं क्लरिकलच पाहिजे जॉब्स आणि असेच पाहिजे त्याच्यातनं जर आम्ही थोडं बाहेर आलो तर नक्कीच काही फरक होऊ शकतो असं मला वाटत अगदी बरोबर अगदीच बरोबर आहे आणि तुमच्या बरोबर मला पण बऱ्याच नव्या गोष्टी कळल्या अपूर्वाचं ऐकून कारण मुलगी असली तरी असे डिस्कशन तुम्ही नॉर्मली आपल्याला असं होत नाही आणि ती बरीच लांब आहे त्यामुळे बऱ्याच स्पेशली आज काय वर्ल्ड मध्ये काय होत आहे ते बऱ्याच गोष्टी तिच्याकडनं स्पेशली तिने जे सगळे जे रिसर्च पेपर्स आणि याचे जे हे दिले ते बरंच इन्फॉर्मेटिव्ह होतं माझ्यासाठी पण थँक्यू व्हेरी मच फॉर ऑर्गनायझिंग दिस थँक्स अलॉट 
now we move uh, onwards to the ending part of our session that is a vote of thanks on behalf of uh, anand vishwa gurukul junior college i would like to thank our today's speaker mrs apurva deshmukh madam for Ms. making Apurva, an excellent mrs Apur, apurva deshmukh madam for making an excellent presentation for this webinar interesting and uh, meaningful again i would like to thank our uh, honorable mahaguru dr pradeep dhawal sir and our uh, and mr ashutosh deshmukh sir and all other dignitaries uh, our teachers our students and parents who join with us uh, by zoom and facebook once again thanks to all uh, for a truly memorable evening we hope that you all can join with us again on tomorrow with the new topic and new speaker and the last with the permission of our principal